I am most eager to address the ASEAN threat. However, we dare not neglect our other pressing concerns. We both know full well that Saint Shiva will not be the last primal we face. Yeah, the weird primal where she, um, the, the ice lady, basically absorbed the primal and became the primal, but still had to some degree her own consciousness, which was brand new for the primal threat. Some days I wonder if it was wise for us to take on so many other responsibilities. Lest you forget, Antecedent, the science need not shoulder the burden alone. Were not the crystal braves established for this very reason? To what do we owe the pleasure? Have there been further developments regarding the situation in Alda? As expected, the immortal flames have been struggling to cope with the revelation one of their highest ranking officers was a Garlean agent. Plainly, General Raban needs our help, and I will direct the crystal braves to offer what support they can. And so, for the foreseeable future, I think it would be best if I were to remain in Alda, unless you have an objection, of course. Monbrida's research is proceeding as planned? Oh, that was Alfino. <laughs> Alas, the key problem, how to form an ethereal blade at will, remains unsolved. Nevertheless, it is only a matter of time. Jake, while we focus on that task, mayhap you could assist Alfino and his braves with theirs? It would do so much to restore faith in the immortal flames if the Warrior of Light was seen working on their behalf. Now then, there are preparations I must attend before my departure with my manservant, such as receiving Riol's latest report. When you are finished here, join me outside. Depending on what he has to say, I may soon have a favor to ask. Welcome to 2.5, Before the Dawn, Part 1. Before the Dawn? You've already had a new dawn. This looks like Riol. Me and mine have been making inquiries into the source of the weapons what found their way into the refugee hands a ways back. So it happens we caught wind of something promising. A rather large bunch of sharp and pointy things by the way of a black marketeer holds up near Highbridge. I doubt that this man would have secured such a quantity of weapons if he did not already have clients waiting. Clients that, for whatever reason, would prefer for this transaction to remain secret. Brings to mind that merchant what caught an error while talking to Jake, don't it? Generous fellow, was he? Doling out swords and spears to the downtrodden and disgruntled. Which isn't to say that these clients have the same mischief in mind, but if you want to be sure, it might be prudent to intervene before they collect their goods, savvy? Seizing the weapons before they fall into the wrong hands would be for the best. However, if we strike at the anointed hour, we might capture the Black Marketeer as well as his clients. Rendezvous with Captain Ilbert at the High Bridge and intervene when the exchange takes place. Now then, if you would excuse me, I must leave for old up. I expect good tidings. <gasps> My Lalafell army has arrived. Elves everywhere. I love it. <gasps> Wait, this person, it's this Tataru! It's <laughs> literally... <laughs> Tataru, where are you going? Oh, she ran back inside, getting back to her duties. <laughs> that was amazing. Ah, Jake, my scouts have been keeping a close eye on the Black Marketeer, and it would seem that his guests have arrived. Now then, we should make for the Burning Wall without delay and secure those weapons. The first unit will enclose, ensure that the clients do not escape. With me, Jake. Once you've disposed of the thugs, wait for us outside the tunnel entrance. Any questions? Let us be off. Good luck, my friend. Alright, we're coming, and we're killing some birds on the way. Oh, no, we're just talking to him. Excuse me, sir. We would like to uh, tell you to stop your, your suspicious deal. You never have come here. Where'd your friends come from? Sounds like it, you shouldn't have come here. Beautiful area, but also, what a perfect time to be watching and investigating in the middle of the night. I don't understand. What is this all about? Gah! Wait, what is happening down there? Is this the merchant here? As you can see, this is a fine mess. When I tried to restrain him, he drew a hidden blade and lashed out. But before I could disarm him, one of my subordinates panicked, and this is the result. Oh, he's dead. How foolish of me to underestimate the man and to bring an inexperienced recruit. Commander Levelure would be most disappointed. Unless he killed him? There's no way that he's a spy in our own ranks, is it? 
As for the clients, he's the one who like procured all this information, so it would make sense for him to bring all of this like, hey, I've got this great information, and now I'm going to kill the informant, who I told you about. Though we know not how, they slip past our perimeter. At present, the first is currently tracking a party of dusk white cell swords. We suspect maybe them. Well, at the very least, we have secured the weapons. E yet even that accomplishment is lacking, for the information we received indicated a massive shipment, and this is anything but. Bait and switch. Did they know that we were coming? In the meantime, I ask that you, you deliver these weapons to Ulda in my stead. And trust them with the thirds at Yu Yu Hase. He will take care of the rest. Oh, we've been we've worked with Yu Yu Hase before. He's cool, he's cool. Yu Yu Hase, I've got some swords for you. A gift of weapons from a certain black marketeer, courtesy of Captain Ilbert, you say? Understood. Once we've cataloged the con uh, contents, I'll have them delivered to the Hall of Flames. Okay, good. Phew. This can't be everything, can it? No, it definitely is not enough. Riol stated with confidence there would be far greater quantity of weapons. A blatant falsehood. Clearly, Riol is unfamiliar with the ways of the Aldon merchants, who ever strive to present themselves as greater than they are. We should be thankful that his information was not completely erroneous, and that we managed to achieve anything of worth at all. Wow. They clearly have differing opinions. Excellent work, as always, my friend. Rest assured that the Immortal Flames will hear of your contribution. Until we meet again. Delivery boy work. Better than trying to talk down primals from destroying the world. Jake, a word, if it please you. Look for me at the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. No need for whistling this time. Don't you worry. I'll get to the point. At the burning wall, when you and the captain were interrupted in the exchange, what happened? Tell me everything. Leave no detail out. Well, he ran off, and we followed him, and he said the subordinate killed them, but that makes no sense. Hmm, that's not quite how the first told it. These Dusk Whites they were chasing, they just word is that we lost the trail. But you never saw them yourself? Not before the fight started, and not after. Something ain't right. I don't know what it is, but I can feel it in my bones. I'm not daft enough to be misled by some merchant's drunken boasts. Our information was reliable, gosh darn it. I know he purchased those weapons. What did he do with them? Oh, as if I've never deciphered a money lender's books or had to follow a transaction back to its source. Did plenty of that back when the brace were getting started, believe me. The commander wanted assurances we weren't taking gill from the wrong sort of benefactors. Of course, these days the money flows like water, and the first and third get the shiniest new toys. Look at the disgruntlement that's already happening within the Crystal Braves. It's crazy. Forgive me, friend. I have a lot on my mind these days, and I appreciate you lending an ear. Right then, best get back to it. Don't worry, mate. We got your back. Jake, can you hear me? It's Tataru. Your presence is urgently requested at the Rising Stones. Please come and see me as soon as you are able. Alright, off we go. Thank you for coming so quickly, Jake. We have a guest from Ishgard who is to speak with you. A most, um, determined lady by all indications. Oh, is this the, um, the lady who is helping Mr. Not Emo? Uh, I'm trying to remember her name. Ah, oh, I was totally off. It's Lucia, <laughs> not R at all. <laughs> Tataru. This is no time for idle chatter. <laughs> I love the point. Hey, get to work. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. We have a guest from Ishgard who wishes to speak with you. Yeah, we figured that out as much. I believe the two of you have met. Yes, and she has an amazing sword. We have. The Observatorium's astrologians have sounded the alarm. Last night, the Dragon Star burned with an intensity not seen in 15 summers. Not since the Dravanians engaged the Empire in the Battle of Silvertear Skies. The brightening of the Dragon Star is said to accompany the roar of a great worm. The astrologians believe that it was Midgard Soma himself who cried out on this occasion. He did seem to cry After out when he destroyed the ship. Centuries, the King of Kings did return to lead his kind against the might of Garlemald, only to fall in his duel with the Agrius, the proud flagship of the Galian fleet. Devoid of life, his corpse remaineth entwined about the Magitek monstrosity even unto this day. Ariange has the right of it. Whatever this alteration in the Dragon Star portends, the Great Worm has shown no sign of life. 
Only by directly examining the Keeper of the Lake can we be certain. However, it will take too long to gain the Holy See's approval to dispatch the Temple Knights. Therefore, Sir Emric would entrust this task to you. Now, if you would excuse me, I must return and assist the Lord Commander. We have precious little time to prepare. To prepare for what, pray tell? Yeah, it's about to be like, prepare for what? There doesn't seem to be anything to prepare for. Unless the dragon when is... When great is, worm anyway. rolls, his brethren cannot choose but answer. We prepare for battle. Oh, I guess they're preparing for, for the dragons to attack. In accordance with Sir Emric's wishes, Emric's wishes, our Doman allies have been standing watch over the Keeper of the Lake. It would be wise to speak with them before investigating the wreckage yourself. Cool, we get to go there. That's pretty awesome. My friend, be careful. We know not what dangers await you within. Now then, let us not neglect our own tasks. There is much to be done and precious little time to do it. Okay. I'm excited about going and potentially scaling the Great Worm. Yeah, I think that's one thing that we going through it now don't quite get to experience the doing a quest and then kind of sitting on it for a little bit before coming back um we're kind of jumping from quest to quest to quest to quest to quest so your luck sir i was just about to send word to revenants toll about the garleans of late i've seen small airships likely from castrum sentry come and go from the keeper of the lake though i cannot say for certain at this distance i believe they may be salvaging something from within the wreckage the Castrum supply lines have been cut for some time, and I wager they're desperate in need of some spare parts and other equipment. Oh, okay, so they're kind of scrapping it for parts and going back and forth. That's kind of cool. So it's true then. The Ishgardians honestly fear that the worm might rise again. Hmm. Well, from here it seems rather unlikely. But, if it's assurance they want, you've no choice but to inspect the corpse in its entirety. Easier said than done, given the creatures which inhabit the wreckage and the aforementioned Garleans, who won't take kindly to your presence. They're sure to fire upon an airship, so I'd advise a more stealthy approach. Take this boat and a few of your comrades to the base of the Agrius, and then climb to the top. That's the only viable approach, I'd say. The Keeper of the Lake is now accessible. Oh, Scholar? Summoner! Ah, oh, I should have thought of the horn! I should have seen the horn. <laughs> close enough. Close enough. Whoa. The keeper of the lake. Through the water? Oh, this is amazing. I really hope we get to actually, like, climb the scales. Oh, whoa, it's falling apart right now? Or does something knock that down? I don't know how much of this stuff we want to draw. Can you can pull to your heart's content? Yeah, but can we survive me pulling to my heart's content? <laughs> That's an entirely different question. Climb up the pipes. Whoa, Einhander? These things are just crazy looking. Uh oh, Cerulean tank. Am I supposed to attack that? Grab it, I'm not really sure. It got knocked over into the corner. Okay, so he flies up. He brought down a goblin gun! What? <laughs> no way! No way! Please tell me he just... Brrr, let's loose. We got even more tanks in the corner. This is bad news. Those things are gonna blow up, aren't they? Ow. Stop that. I don't know why you need a Gatlet gun. Oh, no, he pulled them close. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Someone pushed him away. Thank you. Oh, he drew them all close again. How do we knock him away? Uh, oh, I think that worked. I think that worked really well, actually. Nice. Okay, well, we'll keep that in mind for the future. But we gotta find the thing that's sending the alarm. It's way up there. Ooh. I would say that the time for stealth has passed, but it's still a stealth issue to kill all. 
right. If no one is alive to know that we exist. Uh, that we need the key for the terminal. Ooh. Magitek gunship. Wait a minute, he can fly. This isn't fair. Oh, whoa, his flamethrower is consistent. It wasn't a one shot. I'm such an idiot. Clearly, this is why we need to be in our. Oh no, they've dropped a bunch of guys now, too. Do they get burned by the fire? Wow, wouldn't that be just handy dandy if they did? Goes on these firebombing runs and just covers the whole ground in crazy flame. Oh, we get to climb the scales! I was hoping that we would. Whoa, you can see the a gunship there! That's really neat! Oh, wait, is the gunship shooting at us? I think the gunship was shooting at us, and that's what some of those explosions were. Dragons are so cool. I'm sorry I have to kill you all. You're being problematic, all right? Please don't resurrect your dragon god deity. And the gunship is clearing the way for us. Thank you. Whoa. Either they're asleep or they're already dead. But we fought the dragons before. We fought like blue and yellow dragons before, but they look very dead. Who treadeth now upon what? my bones and waketh me from slumber sweet? No, uh, go back to sleep. We're all good. Everything's fine here. <laughs> No! <laughs> Did we wake him up? Please don't tell me we're the reason that he woke up. Thou hast forgotten the face of thy lord. Remember, mortal, and fear me. Whoa, we're actually fighting him! Oh, we got the protection shield. Okay, get out, apparently. Oh! Okay. We're almost taking down Mirage Dragon number one. Alright, got one. Alright, come here. Back to you. Into the I place my spirit. Yeah! So it's like when we. Ooh, get out! Okay. We mostly escaped that. Um. When, when he puts his spirit into it, we, um, whatever damage we do to it, we're doing to him. Sheet of Ice, oh my gosh, so many AoEs. Oh, damage taken is reduced. Oh, okay. Okay, there we go, now the debuff went away. Okay, into here. Hide in this small sliver. Okay, hide in this small sliver. Alright, limit break time. <laughs> I think they started the limit break, but it was a little bit too late to get the whole the whole effect. Oof. I I am sorry for uh <laughs> Not making that easier on any of you guys. Uh, I'm really, really sorry about that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I will improve over time. I promise. I promise. That's the same big dragon in 1.0. Yes! Yes! By her gifts, that's going to be Heidelin. Has thou earned a moment's reprieve? So we're, we're resting. But is he saying that he's going to come back? He still plans on coming back. Yeah, look at the red eyes. Whoa. Speak, mortal. Oh. And I shall listen. Uh, please go back to sleep for another thousand years. That would be wonderful. My people have heard the song. Oh. It's so cool that we're getting to actually talk with him. I rise to join in the chorus. 
Is that a metaphorical rise or a <laughs> physical? The voice acting is amazing. Oh! What? Trickery is thy shield. What just happened? Frail, noble creature is not gifted, but chosen. Is that Heidelin's production? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So he made like a, a, a pact with Heidelin that he would not... What? Hold on, what? <laughs> he just said he wouldn't harm us and then he shoots us through the chest. Sends us to the Aether Realm. Yeah, look at us. This is all of the, the six crystals. The ones that we collected over all of ARR. That doesn't seem very good. Yeah, the whole thing is like shattered. It's like a seal. I think this is like Heidelin's protective seal. See, he said that he wouldn't harm us, but that doesn't mean that he wouldn't harm our protection from Heidelin. I am, I am thou confused, art but mistaken. yeah. If see, thou comest to harm, it shall be by another's hand, not mine. He still I definitely affected it. But strip yep. Thee. Yeah, that's not Thou good at all. Didst profit much by her grace, but no more. Uh, we didn't ask for that. <laughs> oh, it's a cute little dragon, though. The covenant binds me to thee. I shall watch, listen, and wait. Wait. But I think we just got a pet, but a, a, a like um, a piece of an epic Never dragon. Ever coveted that which lieth beyond his grasp. I drink of her body, and thence doth mine own find me life. Drinking from the like aether. So he's definitely saying there's gonna come a time where he's gonna come back. Can we sever his link with the Aether or something? We have a dragon pet, which is amazing, but it didn't exactly come at the expense that we were expecting. Especially not losing Heidelin's blessing and, and, and protection over us. This is, I have such mixed feelings. Dragons are so epic and awesome, but at the same time, this is literally apocalyptic and not very good. So it is, it's like a minion. Look at all the little, <laughs> little bits go silver dragons. They're so cute. Look, he's riding on your head. Oh my gosh, that's the most adorable thing ever. <laughs> that is fantastic. Will he come sit on our shoulder or something? He will sit on your shoulder, but I mean, he's the king of dragons. You you can't make him do I stuff. I can't control by him. Oh. He just does it on his own. <laughs> no, I will befriend him and make him mine. See, see, look. Oh, we don't we don't have any pants on. This is shameful. 
<laughs> okay, now I understand why you wouldn't want to talk to us. What happened to our pants? I have no idea what happened. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> All the times that you would comment when you would see people with Midgard Sormer on their shoulder and you'd be like, oh, they have a dragon pet, that's so cool. <laughs> I want just, a dragon pet. <laughs> like the name was right there. It, it was, it's like that meme where like the shifty eyes looking to the side, like, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> they had mentioned Midgard Sober multiple times. In, in the I never I put like... the two together. <laughs> Praise the twelve. You are hail and hold. I came as soon as Minfilly informed me of Sir Emmerich's request. You have completed your investigation of the Keeper of the Lake. I take it. Then I would hear your report. Pulls out Dragon Pet. <laughs> you converse with Midgard, Midgard Solmer. I swear, if it were anyone else to make such a claim, I would regard it as considerable skepticism. Though his words were ambiguous at times, one statement left little room for interpretation. His, uh, one of his children. My people have heard the song, Ishgard shall burn. Clearly an attack is imminent. We must share this information with Sir Emmerich immediately. As for how we shall present our revelation to Sir Merrick's emissary, you may leave that to me. Pray, remain here for now, with your mismatched gauntlets. Is there something you are not telling us, Jake? Yeah, we have to have a private conversation. You seem different somehow. It is almost as if you are missing something, something important. Yeah, we lost uh, Heidelin's protection. Twelve for Fend. Midskar Somer stripped you of the blessing of light. Are you alright? How do you feel? I feel okay. I see. It is a relief to hear that you are otherwise unharmed. It beggars belief that any being could possess the power to deprive you of her blessing. Nidskar hmm. Somer made mention of a covenant, did he not? I wonder, what if this was the covenant of which he spoke, and was not the gods with whom he treated? but Heidelin herself. Definitely seems that way. That he made a commitment that he would not, you know, hurt those who she protected. Well, if he is watching over you as he claimed, mayhap you will have an opportunity to ask. Let us keep this matter to ourselves. I do not wish to burden our friends needlessly. So many secrets being hidden around. Yeah, he shows up wherever. Art thou a pawn or master of thy fate? What hast thou wrought by thine own hands, mortal? Well, we crafted some gear, and we're level 50 in all of our, uh, uh Disciple of the Land, and, uh... <laughs> My friend, I can scarce believe it. You confronted the Worm Lord and lived to tell the tale. Just his spirit. Your encounter with the Keeper of the Lake served to confirm our fears. A great worm has roared, and it makes little difference if it was one of the two in Eorzea, or any other. Two in Eorzea, or any other. Okay, well we know of one. What's the other great worm? I think the other great worm is the one that the Dragoon um, storyline talks about, where we have the, the eye. Uh, I forget the name of that dragon that the, the eye was taken from, but I think that's the second dragon that uh, Lucy is talking about. Coming? I am told that Ishgard has magical defenses against Dravanian attack, though I am not privy to their exact nature. I don't think anyone is privy to their exact nature. And now the that pride. you have confirmed the threat, none can ignore the Lord Commander's calls for the wards to be strengthened. I dare not presume to speak for him, but I expect the Lord Commander would sing your praises. I must away, but we shall meet again soon. Uh, I wouldn't mind meeting again soon. Countless assaults weathered, and this will be no different. Why am I not convinced? The Ishgardians have warred with the Dravanians for centuries, nay, nearly 1,000 years. In all that time, not once have their enemies breached their defenses and entered the city proper. Yet regardless of how strong these magical wards may be, I nevertheless fear that the Ishgardians are underestimating the gravity of the situation. Until such time as they choose to request our aid, however, we can do naught but observe the situation at a distance, and pray that our fears are unfounded. <laughs> Press X to doubt. 
Ere I forget, I believe Moonbrida has requested a gathering of the Scions. I assume there has been some progress concerning our efforts to combat the Asions. Pray inform her that our business with the Ishgardians is concluded for the moment. I shall be along once I've completed my communications with the Crystal Braves. Alright. Over here to Moonbrida. All done with your talk of dragons? Wonderful. Because Asians are next on the menu. Let's head to the solar, shall we? Um, sure. Here. Just in case anyone's forgotten, let's start by reviewing what we already know. Please do, it's been so, a minute. An Asian is an immortal because its soul doesn't return to the ethereal realm when its host is defeated. Instead, it flees to the place that lies between our world and the void. Therefore, the first step to permanently defeating an Asian is preventing its soul from making this journey. And if you recall, when we last gathered here, I had verified that White Aurasite has adequate capacity to entrap the beams, albeit only briefly. But not enough to destroy it. That's Which why we need the, the small matter fancy of sword. Their extermination. Than cred. I. To unmake an Asian soul, one must need smite it with a concentrated burst or blade of purest ether. However, we wanted for both the data and the means to forge such a weapon. Short of experimenting on an actual Asian, you see, there's no way to gauge how much ether its soul is made of. As such, we don't know what etheric density our blade needs to have in order for it to work. So we'll just have to make the densest blade we can and hope for the best. Though, that would require a lot of ether. It's and and the only viable <laughs> source is the land. Oh, the land itself. If you need well, that's to not very tap portable. the Great River of Ether, know that it will entail considerable risk. Meddling with the currents may well induce a surge like to the one which despoiled Mordona. Give me a bit more credit, will you? Why would we need to tap the river when there are veritable reservoirs jutting out all over the land? Those aren't very portable. I, I speak of corrupted crystals. It might be that their aspect is out of balance, but a crystal's a crystal. It contains ether, and we can help ourselves to it. What if we could tap their power from afar? A mom away, say? If we could do that, we'd have ready access to ether aplenty in almost every corner of Eorzea. Okay, so how are you tapping into the power from wireless aether tapping? <laughs> I've yet to put my theories to the proof, but I've got a good feeling about this. If no one has any objections, I'd like to see where this avenue leads. Okay. If you think it's worth your while, you have my blessing. Yeah, I don't know that I ever would have come up with that because the idea of tapping into the corrupted aetherite from a distance, I don't think would have ever crossed my mind, so. So with your permission, I'd like to try something a bit more hands-on. I've already built an etheric siphon especially for this purpose, and I've been meaning to try it out. Okay. The thing is, it's like a trident. The fusion of corrupted crystals Baby in trident. Mordona makes it something of a high-risk testing ground. If anything goes awry with the siphon, it would be better if it didn't happen within spitting distance of quite so much ether. Let's go to Thanalan. Much better. Ideally, I need an isolated specimen. Does anyone know where I can find one? Or maybe in the um, blue fog? May I suggest northern Thanalan? Thanalan! There you will find corrupted crystals of middling size, standing a reasonable distance there, It's apart. all a desert. Ideal for your needs, I should have thought. Oh, and if you do elect to visit the place, I should be much obliged if you would assist me in another matter while you are in the area. Movement has been observed at Castrum Meridianum. So we did get it right Though with Blue Fox. I have dispatched the Crystal Braves. I fear their strength alone may not suffice to stay the Imperial assault. I would request the Scion's aid in the defensive effort. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were trying to inveigle us into fighting your battle with the promise of shiny crystals. <laughs> I mean, well, is that then, wrong? Consider me inveigled. I won't lie. The crystals you speak of sound perfect. So the Garleans have to go. Inveigle. Besides, we can't afford to beat about the bush. There's no telling when the Arsians will next appear. Thine eagerness to hurl thyself into the jaws of danger cometh as little surprise. Exercise due caution, I prithee. He does care about her. Aww. Though you have 
become a crystal brave, you are yet a scion, Alfino. We could hardly refuse you. Everyone, pray see to your preparations and depart as soon as you are able. Go well. Be safe. There's all this great action, big experiments happening on crystals, and I'm going to sit there and tinker with Aurasite. The fourth have already developed, to, deployed to the area and await the arrival of the Scions. Will Red will brief you on the developing situation. Meanwhile, I must rendezvous with Captain Ilbert at the headquarters in Old Ark. I shall take command of our forces there with a lighter heart, knowing that you go to support the front lines. He is just kind of sending us all over the place. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. You can jump way too high for a lot of Oh, look at everyone! Now that is an impressive piece of steel. Oh, Mumbrida has a giant axe! You're a marauder, huh? Isn't it a beauty? A lady merchant revenant's toll simply gave it to me. Said she was investing in the future or some such. Wow, lucky. Someone just gives us a weapon. Except for all the stuff that we've looted from raids. Have you ever seen Moonswinger axe? Swipe, slice, cleave! That's really, there's really no stopping her. Glad to have you with us, Jake. As I'm sure Lieutenant Edelstein has explained, the Garleans have deployed a small force from Castrum Meridianum. Their main column assembles to the north near Dalman's Talons, but we've also spied several squads attempting to conceal themselves on the approach to the west. They wish you to rush forth and commit to battle with their main column, leaving the detached force free to raid the plant and pillage supplies. Not much of a strategy, but these are desperate men. Captain Ilbert! If there be no objective, objections, the Scions shall join the fourth and give battle to this main column. And then we go head off the small column to the side. You are with the third, or Ilbert, you are with the third then, Warrior of Light. Your job will be to intercept these squads hiding out in the west and prevent them from reaching the processing plant. Yeah, I, I assume so as much. When you're ready to proceed, report to Lieutenant Yuyo Hase. His scouts should have a rough idea of where the Imperials have concealed themselves by now. In the middle of the night? Of course they would attack in the middle of the night. Oh, what? Already engaged in battle? Did you already take them all out already? I think you did. <laughs> you cleared it before we even got here. Can we sneak around from behind? Aw, oh, thank you, Karanos, for how the assist. Defeat the next ghost. Oh, we got we got both. You seem grim, Cyan. I'll take it that to mean that between us, more than a few Garleans won't be making it back to the Castrum. It is time we bid this war-torn land farewell. I will contact the fourth and let Lieutenant Elaine know that the West is now clear. I would appreciate it if you would do the same when you report to Lieutenant Edelstein. You must be anxious for word of your fellows. Lieutenant Elaine has reported a sound victory over the main column and informs me that the Scions have already turned their attention to other duties. All but one, that is. The Rogadin lady with the large axe, but it appears she has chosen to remain at the site of battle. I know not what keeps her from returning to civilization, but Northern Thandalan is no place to wander alone, even for a capable sort such as her. I would certainly feel better about things if you could check in on her before you continue on your way. Oh, she's doing her Aetherite tests. That's no problem at all. The Ooh. beast seemed peckish, so I gave it a taste of my axe. That's one of those, um, uh, Thanalan little dragons with the really long necks. The Pists. I know, I know. As Urian Jay never tires of reminding me, an axe ill becometh the hand of a scholar. <sighs> what can I say? I like axes. To hear my mother tell it, I came into this world holding one. Wow, that had to be painful. And it's not as if it stopped me picking up a quill, is it? I often think of the man who introduced me to the joys of learning. He's one of the reasons I decided to come to Eorzea. Him and my excruciatingly stiff childhood friend. Considering how unalike we are, it's a wonder we ever got on. <laughs> the world's a strange old place, isn't it? I wonder who she could be talking about. Aye, that ought to do it. Fancy. Super fancy. Did you see that? The way the crystal glowed? 
the siphon works, I'm happy to say. With a few refinements, it should satisfy our appetite for ether. Which just leaves the small matter of forging our blade. Also, if it fell into the wrong hands, it could probably make for a pretty crazy weapon. I'm not sure how to go about it just yet, but I swear to find a way. I'll put a blade in your hands if it's the last thing I do. Don't worry, we got our own already. Appreciate it, though. If you want a fancy blade, that's fine, too. He senses me. A useful talent. Oh, who's this? It's not Eldebus. He's not wearing the white robes. By your brand, I see you are an archon of Charlian. Charlian. Keeper of knowledge. Seeker of truth. Meddler. I don't know what the hells you're saying, but I don't much like your tone. <laughs> it's very... <laughs> your instincts serve you well. But come, like a true villain. Be not unsettled on my account. That lovely brow was not made for frowns. Let me direct my words to one who understands them. We meet at last, warrior of love. They give me the pronunciation I immediately. Am Nabrialis. Nabrialis. And you have long been a thorn in my side. Can we jab a little deeper? I suffered the overweening presence of Lahabrea that men might host the power of gods, only for you to undo my hard work. Oh, bugger. Whoa, with one finger? Do settle down. I do not sense the blessing of life. Yeah, that's a problem. Oh, dear. Could it be that frail Heidlin has forgotten her champion? This I did not foresee. That's not Sean, exactly what happened. Light as you are, you are no longer a threat. And better yet, the seal is broken. Now is the time to claim the staff. The staff? The staff? With it in my grasp, I shall rise above them all and take my place at Lord Zodiac's right hand. Is this the staff that I'm thinking he's talking about? What did that bastard want with us? I think we need to head back to the Rising Stones immediately. Oh, gods. He means Tupsimati, Master Louis Soir's staff. Tupsimati. Minfilia's in danger. We have to get back to the Rising Stones. That's what I was saying. What are we standing around here for? No! Oh, she's got it. She's she's holding it. Okay. Sideburns. You were able to divine my intent. He kind of told now, it to us and spilled it. Of light. Ah, but that name is no longer fitting. You have become decidedly dull and quite incapable of barring my entry. My sword might be enough, though. What do you mean? His entry. You truly do not know. Then I suppose it is only right that I enlighten. Wait, is he going to enter us? And try to take over us? No, the dragon's gonna stop him. The blessing of light kept you and your fellow meddlers safe. It was that which prevented my kind from entering your domain. Now that the seal is gone, I mean to act. Unlike the others, I am not given to waiting. I shall take that staff and bring about the next rejoining. Rejoining? Then it was your doing. The Isle of Val, the scholars, all of it. Yeah, can someone stab him? You will not harm her. Though to be fair, the last time she did this, it didn't work out very well. <laughs> oh. Moonbreeder. Now, when Elidipus uh, used the same thing on Menphilia, it hurt her, but it definitely didn't kill her. But she sees it a lot worse for the wear. Is but a broken relic, a memorial to the departed. What possible use could you have for it? You mean to say that all this time you kept the key, never knowing what it was you possessed? The Wait. The staff Tupsimati, 
or rather the stone tablet it bears, is host to a great power. Together with the horn, it can be used to draw vast quantities of ether from its bearer's surroundings. Master Louis Swa was using. Swa was able to invoke the power of the Twelve without making them an offering of crystals. What? Summoning requires not only prayer, but a profusion of ether. Even a child knows that. If I did not know before, you may be certain I do now. But above all, I know that we can and not it's allow broken. the staff to fall into your hands. I will die before I let you take it. That's dangerous words to say to a guy who's pretty happy to kill. I would happily end your miserable life here and now. Okay. Alas, Elidibus would never let me hear the end of it. Very well. If you will not part with the staff, I will take you too. No! Stop him! What are you doing? He just stood there like a total... Oh, we're useless. We're useless. Answer them quickly before the rift closes. We've been to the realm of darkness before. We'll do it again. Dive in headlong. The Chrysalis. What a great name. <laughs> oh, please don't make me main tank. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm I'm very very happy, Laliki. If you want to, if you want to take main tank, and I will off tank duty. I'm I'm more than happy for that. If for the experience we need to to main tank, I'll do that too. But we saw the statue. I was actually literally just talking with my wife the other day about that statue in the background. I was like, what is that monstrosity? I was looking through old screenshots of this area. Ah, get your creepy hand off her, you weirdo. Captain Sideburns. We'll knock that sign right off your face. We want to watch for ads. Magic vulnerability up. I think we have to absorb some of these. Ow. Yeah, so you want to be separated from each other. Ooh. Okay, that didn't do any damage to me, which is good. No! We lost Lovava! Alright, do you want to be on the inside or on the outside? Okay, we su survived that. Uh-oh, here's the orb time. That's my, my best guess. Whoa, hey, that was like a fancy version of Circle of Scorn. Whoa, we're getting drawn in. No, run, run! Ah! <laughs> no. Oh, we were the second to last, we were so close. All right, summoning meteorites down. Ethereal tear. Alright, why are they standing inside of it? It's taking damage. Okay. Wait, was I not supposed to hit that? <laughs> I don't know what I hit. Doing. Oh, we got back through! Okay, so destroying that ethereal tear took us back to fighting him here. Nice. Nice. Secret ASEAN man! We have defeated him. Oh, I'm released Menphilia! Would have been very tropish if we had just caught her. Hey! Nicely done, everyone! Give to saving Menphilia. Aw, my thanks. Menphilia, anytime. Anytime. Moonbreed, are you okay? You're safe. Thank the Twelve. Yeah, Captain Sideburns. Reborn. You may have bested me this day, but what of the next? What of all the days to come? Ah, we'll do it again. Remember, light no longer holds sway here. I may return whensoever I wish. Again and again and again. Eventually, 
you will falter, and the staff will be mine. Until next time, Sion. Blah, 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 blah. You think you're so intimidating. Throw it! Stab him! There will be no next time. This is the end. We don't have the crystal sword, but we'll figure it out. Nice. What? What trickery is this? Alright, we need the sword. Moonbrita, where's your, your little staff? Use Tube Samati to gather ether. Quickly oh. before he Yeah, the free. staff. We could use the staff itself, but we gotta put the little um pieces together. Oh that's so cool. But he's protected! What is this? Why won't it work? Is it because we lack the blessing of light? I thought she would be saw the blessing of light too. So much ether, and it still isn't enough. Use your staff too. Double staff Fools. it up. No mortal prison can contain me. I shall make you pay for your insolence. Whoa! No, don't back down. Don't back Please. down. Mother Heidelin, hearken to our plea. Lend us your divine light. Oh, we've called on Heidelin so much. Why can you not hear us? Do our words no longer reach you? If only we had a bit more ether. You've got it in your hand. No? Moonbreeder, what are you doing? Master Louis Soir, I understand now. No. The choice you made. No, she can't. There is life. Farewell, Orionche. You daft old coot. No, we can't let her do this. Somebody stop her. Moonbreeder, no, you mustn't. What? What? No! It, it cannot end! I am eternal! I am immortal! No! Moonbreeder, she's, she's gone. What? You did it, my friend. The Asian is dead. I don't think that was worth it. This device is a legacy of Moonbreeder's toils and sacrifice. I shall hold on to it for safekeeping. Even if we, even if, uh, killing the Asia, I still don't think it was worth losing Moonbrita. Minthelia, uh, are you all right? No. What happened here? Where is Moonbrita? Dang. She gave her life to temper the blade of light. I, I have no words. Rather than await the inevitable, she took her fate into her own hands. That's still not right, Does though. Does Orionje know? Well, he does now. I heard all, my lady. Yeah, I figured the something like that. The moon sinketh, taking her leave of the heavens. Yet her passing heraldeth the coming of a new day. Moonbreeder hath fulfilled her destiny, hath she not? Far across the seas in the Charlean motherland, Moonbreeder and I did study under the sage tutelage of Master Louis Soi. So it was Louis Soi that actually uh, convinced her to come to Aurorzea. Full off did he impress upon us that knowledge existeth to serve the greater good. This sentiment, however, was contrary to the nation's policy of neutrality. 
which censured intercedence in the affairs of foreign lands. In spite of vehement opposition, he founded the Circle of Knowing and journeyed hitherto the heart of Eorzea. Through his noble sacrifice, was the realm spared its doom. When he left Charleon behind, Master Louis Soir gave no word to signal his intent to Moonbreda. Close as they were, as master and disciple, she was deeply wounded by the sudden exclusion from his confidence. Above all, however, she was confused. Dry as she might, she could ill comprehend her master's motive. The slanders that were heaped upon him after his passing served only to inflame the turmoil within her. Twas not for want of love that Master Louis Soir hid his intent. He but desired that Moonbreeder discover her own path, free of the shadow of his influence. Long did I contemplate revealing the truth to her, and long did I hold my peace. After all, was it not Master Louis Soir's wish that she come to the truth unaided? I told myself it was, and resolved to let her suffer. Ow. That had to have been hard. I don't know if I could do that. Even if it's somebody who's wished that they discovered the truth themselves. My friend the comfort she craved. Yeah. And now she hath gone to her rest. With doubt still in her heart. No, she she figured out why Louis Swan did that. thou in earnest. Yeah, Did Moonbreeder she... truly come to understand Master Louis Soir's will before the end? It definitely seemed that way. Uh, the realization hath set her free. She may now find the peace which hath for so long eluded her. Oh, Moonbreeder, my dearest, how I shall. Moonbreeder looking... gave her life that we might possess the means to defeat the Asians. I was looking forward to more adventures with her. She was really her cool. Her sacrifice must not be in vain. Let us continue her work on the Blade of Ether and see it to completion. My lady, I would mourn Moonbreeder in mine own way. I beg your permission to return to the Waking Sands. Take all the time you require. We shall be here should you have need of us. Okay, can we? What if we go back in time? Then, then Moonbreeder will still be here, and and none of this will happen. And dang it! Dang it! This is another one of those like. You hear in stories and things like, um, you know, characters with plot armor, where you're just like, oh, they're they're too important of a character, they're too a, a main character to 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 lose or whatever. And and clearly, in some regard, we have have plot armor. But um, I definitely I agree with pretty much everyone in the chat was that um, it, it wasn't worth it even to take out one Asian. Like, there was a, a tiny moment in my brain when they started to kind of process the fact that she was gone. I was like, are we gonna lose a friend to for every Asia that exists? What? Like, no, we can't do this. There has to be another way. And, um, and I'm a, a big proponent of there's always another way. But, ah, uh, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. Never have I seen Orianji so utterly defeated. No one should be made to suffer such grief. We shall gather in the Charleian Manor to celebrate Moonbreeda's life and mourn her passing. As Moonbreeda was a native of Charleian, I feel it only fitting that we gather before the mark of the scholar. Are you familiar with the stone? It is a monument found at Rothfrost and is sacred to Thaliac, guardian deity of the City of Learning. I don't think we found this one. We found a couple of the stones, but I don't think we found this one. There we shall pray for our dear friend's soul and bid her a peaceful return to the light of the Mother Crystal. 
Show your respects as a mark of the scholar. Yeah, we've never been been through this area before. It's just really cool. Had I been quicker or wiser, but I was not. And you paid the price. But you would not suffer us to wallow in our sorrow, would you? You would tell us to pick ourselves up and get on with it. And so we shall. We shall defend this realm and her people to the last. Oh, that was the other cool thing. Was Life that a... Life for death. A fair exchange. I thought it cool that she had super gray eyes like we do. Other bargains will be struck. Other life or death bargains? Can we change the parameters of the bargains? All right, group hug. Balaki, let's hug Lavava and let's all have a group hug together. <laughs> group hug for the loss of a good friend. Aww. That's the type of group hug that we need. Rising stones feel somehow colder. Moonbreeder always carried with her such an abundance of warmth and cheer. I loathe to see Ida in such pain, but I have not the words to comfort her. Can you imagine it? I, Papalimo, the one who has an eloquent comment for every situation and at a loss for words. Ida. I don't feel much like talking at the moment. If you could just give me some time. Tis as if a dagger has been thrust into my chest. But tis a pain we must learn to bear if we are to forgo, forge ahead with our duty. The battles we have fought have already taken the lives of so many. Louis Swa, Moon Brita, our fellows at the Waking Sands. I guess Narox is included in, in all of those awesome people. We talked to so many of them. Their spirit and dedication to our cause, however, will never be lost as long as we rise and fight once more. I hardly need to remind you of this, of course. It is for my own benefit that I repeat these words. A reaffirmation of mine own chosen path. If I do not rebuild the foundation of my resolve, I am like to collapse in a fit of weeping. My apologies again, Jake. There is no other whom I could display such weakness. You are my person. Oh no, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna let you down so many times. Don't don't do that. And I fear we shall have need of your steadfast presence in the days to come. A victory won, a comrade lost. To honor the fallen, the living forged, ever on towards the light of a new day. To honor the memory of the lost. Is that the end of five point or uh, two point five part one? <laughs> that is the end. That's the end. Ends in disappointment and sadness and tears. <laughs> Ugh. And no more Tupsanani? Tup Tupsan Tup Tupsanani? Tupsamani. Tupsamani. Tutsalati, uh, <laughs> in 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 the case anymore. We need to put it back. I think we're uh, in theory holding on to it. No, I think she has it at the moment. You think she still has it? Yeah. Do we see it hanging from her belt anywhere? Doesn't look like it. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I'm I'm frustrated because it's one thing if you lose someone after like. A huge, you know, a realm reborn arc or something, right? The, the whole arc in which you have time to get to know someone, go on a bunch of adventures with them, and you lose them, and it's it's painful to lose them, but you're like, at least, you know, we have the memories of the good times that we had together. With Moon Breed, it was like, we barely got to even chat with her. We, we barely got to scratch the surface of this character, and, and we were just getting to know her, or like her, her chipper personality, her teasing with Oriange and her her just fun she was just a fun character and then and we just as we're like this is a great character nope rip nope Pfft. throw it away <laughs> just like nah Ugh. 
Yeah, I definitely felt robbed in that scene because it was like, I guess I kind of like assumed that like scion related or adjacent characters have plot armor. Right, and that's so, what I was saying earlier about the plot armor. You're like, like, these characters should be safe, at least for a long time. Yeah, I felt I felt robbed, you know, by the Asians. I felt robbed by the plot. You know, I was just, I was, I, I love it. I was very mad at this point in the story when I was doing it. Yeah, I was just yeah. like, I don't, I don't want to play this game anymore. That's it. We're logging out for forever. Never coming back. We're done. Done with it.